Hi, so we've been working on this thing actually, which is a cube octahedron generator. Kind of interesting, kind of worked, probably worth looking at even further. But the most interesting thing has been the comments and suggestions, of which there have been loads and some really good ones. Now, there's one that I want to highlight actually. Now, I don't want to mention the person's name who suggested this because it's not particularly that comment, but the reply to that comment, and I don't want to highlight the person who replied. So please forgive me. But the, a couple of people have mentioned the Magnus effect, and um, I normally would mention you by name and thank you, but I'm not going to mention you by name for that reason, but I'm still going to thank you for the suggestion. Awesome suggestion, really. Now, the suggestion was, can you make a wind generator out of using the Magnus effect, and do you know about it? Well, yes, I know about the Magnus effect, and I know about the experimental ships that were run using rotating cylinders and experimental aeroplanes. So, yes, I know about it but I didn't know about the Magnus Effect Generator. Now, the really interesting thing was that when this person posted that suggestion, somebody posted a reply about how it would never work and what a stupid idea it was, and they listed all of these reasons why it would never work. Now, to me, that's a bit like throwing the gauntlet down. So I read this and I thought, hmm, I wonder, and I had a search on the internet. It wasn't that difficult, to be honest. And believe it or not, there is a Magnus Effect wind generator. The Japanese invented it. All we're going to do is replicate that Japanese invention. So if you see the Magnus Effect wind generator as a, an affront to you personally, don't write to me, write to the Japanese and blame them. They're the ones who invented it. I'm just replicating it. Now, for those who don't know what the Magnus Effect is, when a um, stream of air hits a cylinder, Pressure differences are created and it will cause the cylinder to rotate and that will cause movement. So what you need for a Magnus Effect generator is basically a rotating cylinder. Now, of course, we've been at working on these things. So this is a toner cartridge project because if you lift the flap, in there is the imaging drum and that is basically a cylinder of aluminium covered with a plastic coating. And I thought that's going to be really useful. So I took three of those and I extracted, along with other things, those cylinders. So that's the imaging cylinder. Now it comes with pretty little caps on it, and in the here, you'll also find some of these metal bars, which is all really cool, because all you have to do, this is ludicrous actually, is feed that metal bar into the cylinder, stick a couple of bearings on either end, and you have a rotating cylinder. So these bearings are in some sca skater bearings, and they fit on this bar. So all I did was take this out of... You've got to laugh sometimes, haven't you? All I did was take this out of the toner cartridge and stick two bearings on it. Now, I need three of those. So consequently, I have three, and I'm going to set those at 120 degrees apart on some kind of support. The support's really easy, actually. All it is is a plastic disc with three holes to take the bearings at 120 degrees apart. It's got a central hole because we're going to put a spindle. Now, we're not going to put a generator on this particular one, a motor. We're just going to make it spin. We're going to put a spindle and these to show that it can spin. It can also generate. If you want to argue about the possibility of it flying apart and how little torque it will generate, etc, 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 don't talk to me. Talk to the Japanese universities. Have a look at the internet. Have a look on Google Scholar. You'll find research papers on how much this stuff actually generates. We're just replicating it, guys. Anyway, let's assemble that because literally that's all we've got to do. Stick these in here, put the central bar in, and then put the cylinders on, and we can go and give it a test. Okay, so that's it. That's the Magnus generator. Now, these cylinders are free to rotate along their long axis, and clearly that's free to rotate along its central axis. So it took me maybe an hour to lash that up. Okay, there's uh, maybe some questionable degree angles in it, but it really took no time at all. Now we've got to do, obviously, is getting it into a wind. It's supposed to be a hurricane device, and I can see that. It's actually quite stable. But let's put it in a wind and see what we get, if anything. So, of course, I want to test this. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a hurricane. I don't have a wind tunnel. I don't have a pickup truck. I did think about that one, actually. I thought about driving along, sticking my hand out the window and holding it while trying to film it. But as I was going to have to go 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, it sounded just a little bit dangerous to me, so I decided not to do it that way. But one thing I do have is this. It's a blower. It blows at uh, 280 cubic meters per hour on the setting I'm going to use, and I've got it pointed dead center at this. 
Now I do have a black dot on here and that black dot, if you can see it, awesome. If you can't, you'll have to take my word for it. It progresses around as this thing spins. So let's turn it on and see it spin. It's quite a wind actually. That's awesome, it really is. So there you go, a Magnus Effect wind generator made from old toner cartridges in about an hour. That is actually pretty awesome. Now remember, this is supposed to be a hurricane device. So for those who suggested this, awesome thinking, thank you very much. I certainly enjoyed building it and running this project. For those who took the opportunity to rubbish it, well, without being rude, I'd like to suggest that you perhaps try having a bit more of an open mind. For those who want to know more about this, then uh, search Google Scholar and the internet. The Japanese invented this, they've got prototypes up and working, and there's lots of information about it if you look in the right place. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to subscribe.